going around the globe for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Welcome to God's View. Hello and welcome to God's View. We are back today with our special guest, all the way from Colorado Springs, Chaps Klingensmith. And I'll tell you what, that's one name to say, but God has used him in a powerful way. You're getting to pray in Jesus' name, some of you, just because of him, you know, and the, and the things that he has fought. I mean, this man laid his life down for Christ and, you know, fought government and, you know, lost pensions, got an uh, honorable discharge, but I mean, he was a major. I mean, he put it on the line for Christ and for you. And so, please stay tuned. This is the uh, second show. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to go out to the networks. And you may be watching in, like, because we, we're in Trinidad, Tobago. You may be sitting on a beach and watching it in the Caribbean. But, right. you know, there's all different times, whether you're in Russia, whether you're in Madagascar, we're on Israel, or Egypt, you know, wherever you are, you're going to see them at different times. And so and then, of course, all across the United States of America, we just went on another channel in Dallas. And... Um, they're, they're reaching another 6.5 million, and we're already on uh, another channel in Dallas that reaches millions. And so, and you're, uh, you have a show out of Dallas. Yeah. Well, and so, you know, it's going to be good, but we're going to introduce you and we're going to get to that. So, listen, <laughs> call the prayer lines while we're going through the program. 307 637 Pray. Please do not go through things alone. Yes. Always behind my head, periodically across the bottom mm -hmm. of the screen. But we're going to get going because he's got a lot to say. Charlene, back to Mary, you're God's view host. And this is our special guest host because Stephanie is still gone. Please pray. They, they had, you know, um, going through the loss of her father. And so please pray. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, <laughs> this is not Stephanie. It's Brandy <laughs> Jose Chavez. And then we have Priscilla Pruitt and we have Lana Garner. And we welcome Mr. Chaps back. Yes. Hey, everybody. Yay. Yay. <laughs> you were just, that was a fabulous show. Oh, and I want to thank you too, yes. all of us. Thank you. You know, and like when Brandy said that, I was so glad you said that because mm -hmm. people don't say it enough. People fight for you. Yes, and then for people your freedom. Yeah, it's just like they throw you to the curb mm -hmm. like you're some chopped meat. You mm -hmm. know, many churches do that when somebody has worked so hard for so many years and then they leave because God says, not because anything bad. And you see right. people in the story, yeah. they're going like this and you're this bad person and, and all these kinds of stuff. And nobody says, they, they, they throw you out like you're chopped meat. And so we're thanking you you very yes. much for what you've done what you went before us so that we can have this freedom you're so yes. sweet if anyone didn't see uh, the, the show we just recorded I'll, I'll just recap briefly my name is chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt I'm a former Navy chaplain and I took a stand in 2006 when the government wrote a bad policy saying that Navy chaplains are not allowed to pray in Jesus name in mm -hmm. public uh, the, the technical term in the policy, 1730.7c, was non-sectarian prayers are required and commanders can hold accountable chaplains who pray sectarian prayers. What that means is uh, you can pray to God, you can say amen, but you cannot say in Jesus' name hmm. because that might offend somebody and the commander should punish the chaplain if he prays in Jesus' name outside of church. Hmm offend the devil. I know, right? Wow. Yeah. So as I said yesterday, I, I took a stand. I stood in front of the White House in my Navy uniform and I prayed in Jesus' name on national television. Praise the Lord. And so I broke that policy about four different ways and I lost my career. I demanded my own misdemeanor court martial. I was found guilty of worshiping in public in my uniform outside of church. Uh, but then a miracle happened. 300,000 Americans like you and like your TV viewers, you petitioned the U.S. Congress. And I was vindicated by Congress who changed the law. Wow. Even though I was found guilty of a misdemeanor crime, Congress reversed the policy and the Secretary of the Navy repented. He rescinded the bad policy and we won. Now the other chaplains have freedom again to pray in Jesus' name even in public, even in uniform, seven days a week. It was a great victory That's for awesome. all the other chaplains. And unfortunately, I lost my career. I was honorably discharged. I lost a 16-year career as an officer. I lost a million-dollar pension. Oh, my uh, God. My wife and I got an eviction notice from our home on the Navy base. But people ask me, Chaps, that's a great price, but would you do it again? Would you disobey the government 
in order to obey God? And I say, yes, I would do it again Amen. because I kept my soul. I refused to deny Christ mm -hmm. when ordered by the government. Right. And we were vindicated by Congress and now all the other chaplains have freedom again to pray in Jesus name, even yes. in public. Yeah. And their sailors will forever hear the name of Jesus from their chaplains. Because we reverse that bad law. Yes. Thank awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And how long from the time that they put that law into place into the time that you broke it and got in trouble? How long was that? So it was all within 2006. That was a magical wow, year. Wow. Uh, in March, uh, in February, they wrote the policy. In March, I broke the policy. In <gasps> September, was my, was my, <laughs> well, no, that's when, that's when I, I violated the policy. Then in wow. September was my court martial. Then in October was the congressional order. And November is when the Navy repented. Wow. So all within, in less than 12 months, it was start to finish. And we got that policy thrown off the books. But that was just the beginning, right? We talked about all that story yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, since then, we have now helped send 5 million petitions to Congress over the years. 5 million. Oh, that's that's insane. <laughs> we have now five helped million. change bad wow. laws or policies in 13 states. And I've, I won election as a legislator. I won uh, to, to the Colorado State House of Representatives, where I served as a, as a legislator. Um, and so I teach people now through our book, How to Liberate the World, A Step-by-Step -step Guide to Take Back Your Country. Mm. Love the it. book is on Amazon. It's everywhere. You can buy the book, How to Liberate the World. And it's also on our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Wow. Everybody awesome. ought to have that. But in that book, we teach these 15 victory stories of mm -hmm. other people where we go and we hold rallies. We go and we hold petition drives. We go and we lobby. Uh, or we advertise and, and we, we win all the time. We've changed bad laws in 13 states. And with your permission, Charlene, I'd like to talk about a few of those victory stories. You oh, go we for it. Yeah, it. more like, yeah, let, <laughs> yes, it okay? yes, yes. let the Holy Ghost roll. Huh. So, um, first of all, I am the greatest of sinners, right? I, I am, uh, if you see any good inside of me, it's really not Gordon, it's just Jesus. Amen. Right? And he is the one to be praised and he does all this through us. Uh, but also he inspired some friends of mine after my story. Uh, for example, Chaplain Danny Harvey in Florida. Mm -hmm. Chaplain Harvey, uh, and I think we'll, we'll show a picture of him on the screen here. Uh, he was uh, fired from his job as a Baptist preacher. Mm -hmm. He was a hospital chaplain in Leesburg Regional Medical Center. He was the fourth generation of Baptist preachers who prayed in Jesus' name. Wow. And he was threatened after eight years on the job. They told him, don't pray in Jesus name. Oh my. Jeez. He got a letter from the HR director. If you continue to pray in Jesus name, you'll be fired. And so he took a stand. Mm -hmm. He was inspired by uh, the Bible in Colossians 3:17. The Bible says, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, exactly. always. Amen. Giving thanks to God the Father by him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, Chaplain Harvey refused to compromise. He kept on praying in Jesus' name, and he was fired yes, the next day. Wow. He was fired from his job as a chaplain. Well, when I heard about this, I uh, read about it, I think, in Fox News, and I flew down to Florida to meet with him. And I met with, there was a, a, a particular pastor who organized 30 churches to hold a rally. And there were 1,200 citizens on a Saturday morning, and they all had printed t-shirts, my Jesus, my stand, and 1,200 oh. Christians marched around that hospital wow. in silent prayer and protest, oh. demanding freedom to pray in Jesus' name, oh, and the CEO of the hospital resigned in the face of public scandal. Wow. He was driven out of town. He had to move to Louisiana to find, to find work. Wow. So uh, that was a great, the hospital printed a full page ad. They apologized and said, it's okay to pray in Jesus' name. Wow. But Chaplain Harvey never did get his job back. Wow. He paid the price for Jesus. Yeah. And so that was just one example of how we changed a policy. Now it's okay for chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Uh, but it took a rally of the people. It took churches mm -hmm. working together. You should ask your pastor if he can get involved in some of these uh, you know, rallies or, or political events to mobilize, not for Republican or Democrat or not even the elections. Of course, you all should vote. But to stand up for Jesus when, when yes. Christian chaplains are under fire, mm -hmm. it takes their all hands on deck. And we do it 
without charge. Mm -hmm. We do it from our heart because we love God and we want to serve him. But the enemy, the communists and the deep state, they have to pay everybody. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. um, there are four particular anti-Jesus groups that have been threatening lawsuits against Christians around America. And I want to mention them. The ACLU, yeah. Yeah. the Americans United for Separation of Church and State, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and the uh, Military Religious Freedom Foundation. Wow. They're actually Religion Foes yes, Foundation. They are. Uh, but they threaten lawsuits against people. And we actually have a map here of all of the different uh, cities in America where there have been lawsuits against people who pray in Jesus' name. Wow. Now this is back in, in 2005, 2006. Eventually we won at the Supreme Court and a lot of these were wiped off the board. But I wanna talk about one case in Indiana. In Indiana, there was a bad judge, David Hamilton, and he uh, issued a ruling to punish a, a, a particular speaker of the house who had, it, who had invited someone to come and pray in Jesus' name at the Indiana legislature. And the judge said, no, no, you're not allowed to pray in Jesus' name because that's too sectarian and therefore it's unconstitutional, it's oh. banned speech. According to his twisted reading, he's a Democrat, but he, he doesn't understand the Constitution. <laughs> at the same time, this judge, David Hamilton said, it's totally okay to pray to Allah in public. Yes. Wow. Because Allah is non-sectarian <laughs> But in Jesus' name is too wow. sectarian. So one kind is allowed, but the other kind is banned. Mm. It tells you who's who is God. That's right. I know. <laughs> it tells right. It's crazy. Yeah. So I got yeah. involved. I worked with my lawyers at the Rutherford Institute, and we wrote briefings for the Indiana Attorney General who appealed mm. that decision and, and won a two-to-one reversal in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. And now it's okay to pray in Jesus' name wow. in the Indiana Praise legislature because oh, we got God. that bad ruling reversed. Oh you know, chaps, I, I just have to say Jesus. this, and that is that for 39 years, I used to pray every night, dear God, come into my heart. And he never came into my heart. It wasn't until the day that I prayed in a hospital room in Jesus name, mm. that the room lit up and I walked out of that hospital without an operation. Oh my God. That's the yeah. power Amen. of Jesus. There's power name. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. And it's the blood of Jesus that forgives us of our sins. Amen. Yes. Because of his, what he did for us on the cross. Let me talk about Ohio. Yeah. Uh, we had another victory story in Ohio and all these are outlined in my book. If you want to get the book, it's how to liberate the world a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. But we had a great victory story in Ohio when the name of Jesus was threatened. There was, uh, the Speaker of the House at that time was John Husted, and the Democrat minority leader, Chris Redfern, walked off the floor in protest when one of the visiting pastors prayed in Jesus' name to open the session of the Ohio legislature. Mm. Well, John Husted didn't want to offend anybody, so. For a short term, he made a mistake and he banned the name of Jesus from prayers in the Ohio State House. Mm. When I read about this, I flew to Ohio. I spoke in 17 churches or Bible studies there. He's like, I'm gonna go get this I one. Did, I did radio programs with Chris Long of the Ohio Christian Alliance and we lobbied and the very next session, like a few months later when they came back into session, the Speaker of the House repented, reversed his policy, and restored Glory. freedom to pray Praise in Jesus' name wow. in the Ohio State <laughs> House. Thank you. Holy Jesus. Spirit got That's that awesome. That is awesome. Wow. Isn't awesome. that fun? Yeah. Um, you know, there's such an anti-Christ spirit that is against the name of Jesus that, I mean, literally, because the, the demons flee at the name of Jesus. They're yeah, so afraid yeah. of that name and the power that it carries. Yes. That there's yeah. such an attack, an assignment against it. So yeah. thank you. This is incredible. Yeah. Well, let's go on to Oregon. In Baker City, Oregon, on the left coast, right? You think there's a lot of liberals out in Oregon. Uh, <laughs> but there were some conservatives who were praying in Jesus' name at mm. the Baker City Council meetings. Mm. Well, that offended the city council uh, who, there was one particular councilman, I'm not going to say his name, but he walked off in a huff and, and they banned the name of Jesus from future wow. prayers before the city council meeting. Wow. I did not fly to Oregon. Instead, I called some pro-Jesus Pentecostal 
pastors there, mm -hmm. and they organized <laughs> a, <Love that. laughs> a, a, a city council meeting where they had over over 200 people show up at the meeting demanding the right to pray in Jesus' name. Aww. And they reversed the policy. The, the city council voted 5-0 to wow. allow chaplains or pastors to pray in Jesus' name Woo. in Baker City, Oregon. Incredible. Awesome. Wow. North my, Carolina. In North Carolina, my pastor friend, Ron Beatty, I have spoken at his church. He was uh, chaplain of the day at the legislature. Um, and he volunteered and he prayed in Jesus' name. Well, that caused some of the Democrats to be offended and again, uh, he was, they wrote a policy where they would disinvite pastors unless they submitted their pre-screened prayers ahead of time. Oh, no. And if they wrote down in Jesus' name, they were not allowed to pray. Wow. So Chaplain Beatty was fired as the chaplain of the week. He was not allowed to come back and, because he prayed in Jesus' name. So have you ever worked with Jay Sekulow? Go ahead. With yes. That story. Oh, I want it. Yeah. 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 Jay Sekulow is a good friend. He helped send two hundred thousand oh petitions gosh, yeah. for me and for chaplains Yay, right to the Navy. Go Jay Sekulow. He <laughs> did a great job. But yeah. Pastor Ron Beatty, I went. I went to North Carolina. I preached in his church, and then I fired up our fax machines. We sent. <laughs> we sent I'm sorry. thousands. <laughs> That's awesome. We sent thousands of faxes. That's because baby's going. <laughs> to the to a, a, over a hundred. Uh, North Carolina farm legislators. I had North Carolina state senators calling me on the phone. Please turn it off. Make oh, it stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We understand. Yeah, yeah. And when That's they came great. back in session, the new after the elections, the new Republican speaker of the North Carolina legislature reversed the policy, oh, and the first me. pastor That's he invited was Woodland. was allowed to pray in Jesus' name. So Amen. Oh, That's glory fabulous. to God. That's what about fabulous. Tulsa, Oklahoma? Ooh. You would think Tulsa is, yeah, is a Bible Belt. That's a Bible Belt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They got they got O R U there. Uh -huh. the, it's a yeah. Jesus town. Yeah, um, pagan. No, the 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 Tulsa City Council had a ban on the name of Jesus. Apparently, it was on the books for twenty years that you're supposed to pray non sectarian prayers, but it wasn't really enforced. Wow. Until one year, a pastor prayed boldly in Jesus' name before the city council meeting, oh. and he offended somebody. Hmm. Well, then they reversed it and he was disinvited. In fact, they said, we're gonna enforce this policy. Nobody can pray in Jesus' name. Oh That's my. Cool. So I flew to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yay! Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did fly to Tulsa. Of course. And I mobilized some pastors there and they had hundreds of people at the city council mm. meeting. And I was on the front page of the Tulsa World. Here's a, a, a picture of the newspaper article. Activist vows to fight for right to invoke Jesus. <laughs> Come on. So, so that was me uh, there in Activist. Tulsa. I, I made the Add that to your title. <laughs> well, we issued yeah. press releases. It's important to get your story in the newspaper mm -hmm. yeah. so that you can wake up the That's crowd. Right. If you wake up the Shake crowd, up. again, over 100 people attended mm -hmm. that city council meeting and they repented. Seven ah. to two, the city council voted to allow prayers in Jesus' name in the Tulsa City Council. Well, a lot Lord. of activists, that, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, don't they want to go to jail? I mean, they want to get like out there and yeah. cause a stir and get arrested and all this kind of stuff because it gets yeah. gets news. Yes. You know? Well, there there are um, there are four key influencers mentioned in one of the chapters in my book. One is the legislator, right? Because they have the power to write the laws. Right. <laughs> one is the media, because the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. talk about the story that wakes up the American people. Mm -hmm. One is the voters. That's mm -hmm. a very large group of people you want to reach. But the most yeah. powerful of all those four is the activist. Wow. Because the activist is one person who does something crazy. Mm -hmm. Maybe they go on a hunger strike or maybe they mm -hmm. do some protesting yes, yes, and they get yeah. into the newspapers who get it into the mind of the people, yep. who call the legislators, and then all of a sudden there's a tornado and, and, and a hurricane oh, and everything like changes and they change the law because yes. of one activist. You know what I love is that awesome. you're doing this for Christ and there's so many people that know this that are, you know, for homosexuality, that are pushing this agenda, that are pushing this, but we don't have Christians doing this and yeah, we right need now. this. Yeah. We need this. Well, let me talk about one activist I know in Pennsylvania. His name is Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus, mm -hmm. and he is a, a, a Bible-believing, Jesus-loving Jesus pastor mm -hmm. for many years. He was invited to pray at the Pennsylvania State House, mm -hmm. but they asked him ahead of time, would you pre-screen the prayer you're going to say? I want you to write this down. So he wrote down, in Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Well, he got back with, with a black magic marker. They struck out, in Jesus' name, and they said, no, you can only pray this prayer. You cannot pray in Jesus' name. 
Well, he said, forget it, I protest. And he went to the newspapers. So I blew up the Speaker of the Pennsylvania State House, Keith McCall. <laughs> and what we did, we rented some email lists and we got uh, about a thousand people in Pennsylvania to sign a petition. And then we faxed 1,000 pages to each of 250 legislators. 250,000 sheets of paper landing in their office <laughs> on their it. fax machine. Wow. And they had a little private meeting, a come to Jesus moment with the Speaker, <laughs> uh, with the speaker of the House, uh, and he repented. Oh, he wow. invited the pastor, he apologized and said, won't you come and pray? It's okay to pray in Jesus' name. And the pastor, Jerry Stoltzfood, says no. I'm not going to come to your house to pray. I'll go pray in the state Senate instead. And he prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. So yes. that was a victory. And yet so the Speaker amazing. of the House, Keith McCall, never again ran for public office after that. Oh, Isn't that something? Wow. How God's judgment wow. comes upon those yeah. Yeah. Who, wow. who they can lose really, their political yeah. career. Says, yeah, yeah, I live people. in, somebody says, yay, I live in Anderson, Indiana. Mm -hmm. That's uh, 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 Barbara Hamill. Yeah. That, you know, you I know. love how you yeah. said when you said the word offended, that something that you, yeah. you know, praying in Jesus' name, it had offended somebody. I love that you said that because oftentimes God has to offend the mind to get to the heart. Isn't that yes. right? Yes. And you said earlier too, that we're not fighting against people. These yeah. are mindsets. Yes. yes. This is a mindset. This is, this, this isn't a person, no. but if we can offend the mind to get to the heart, God can get to the person. Yes. And it's it's and the demon the inside shift. of the person who gets offended. Right. right. And, yeah. and when that it's demon the, begins yeah. to manifest, they yes. have angry eyes, don't yes. they? Yes, exactly. they do. They're and it's amazing oh, because yeah. these things are also, it's a revelation mm -hmm. because this is where we're seeing the manifestation. Yeah. It's a revelation that this is where God is focused. Yes. He's exactly. focusing in on this, right? Yes. There's such a manifestation that we can say, wow, Lord, you're being so resisted here that this is where the war is. This mm -hmm. is where your yeah. hosts you are being released it. into this. Yeah. Time and time again in the Bible, you see it with Elijah against mm -hmm. Baal. You see it with uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see it with Daniel. God is not going to be mocked. He yeah. will yeah. not allow it. No. And when yeah. the name of Jesus yeah. comes in, the devil's got to come out. Right. right. In That's Jesus' right. name. So right. And you're seeing that's why they don't know all you, you know, like what you were talking about, what he's talking about, we always go back to like what Chap said, that it's the demon within because we do not fight against flesh and blood. Exactly. That's why if we can all stay in our, in our, that's on it. our road, in our lane and fight against the principalities mm -hmm. and the rulers and forces of darkness and quit fighting the person, mm -hmm. we're going to see that's a lot right. more done. So yes. two more quick stories. And you can read all yeah. these in How to Liberate the World, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. The book is available on our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or yes. wherever books are sold. But I want to talk about Lodi, California. There was a mayor there, Larry Hansen, who banned the name of Jesus because he was afraid of lawsuits by the atheist complainers. Wow. wow. The lawsuits came from, uh, you know, Freedom From Religion Foundation, I think up in Michigan. They were going to sue a mayor in California because he allowed pastors to pray in Jesus' name. So he stopped. He, he banned wow. the pastors. Wow. Well, I work with the pastors to go meet with him privately and the mayor would not repent. So then I uh, organized some petition drives and the mayor would not repent. Mm. And so then uh, I went there personally and we held a rally. Here's a picture of me with 400 people pre preaching and, and, and chanting at a city council meeting. Wow. And still the mayor would not repent. This is like uh, Pharaoh when Moses right. comes to him, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So many times he would not say, let my people go. Well, finally <laughs> I threatened to put uh, purchase billboards on the side of the highway. Wow. And I was going to list the names of every city oh, council member it. who voted against <laughs> I Jesus. It. I love it. I love the, it. The mayor repented. Okay. And, and he, restored, <laughs> he restored the right to pray in Jesus' name in Lodi, California. Oh, One bravo. last story I want to talk about uh, Virginia police chaplains. This was this story yeah, took two years of my in. life. I'll, I'll say it in two, two minutes. Years. Two yeah. year, Two year battle. For police chaplains, there was uh, a bad governor there, Tim Kaine, who happened to be a Democrat, uh, who <laughs> backed up his police superintendent, Colonel Flaherty, <laughs> banned his police chaplains. 17 chaplains said, you're not allowed to pray in Jesus' name anymore. Wow. Six of the chaplains were heroes and they resigned as volunteer chaplains. They kept their badge, they were still policemen, but they were no longer chaplains because they didn't want to deny Christ right. by refusing to pray in Jesus' name. Well, I uh, flew to Richmond, Virginia, 
and we organized a rally. Here's a picture of me with Matt Staver of Liberty Council. We had a rally with a thousand people marching on the governor's mansion. Awesome. But the, but the governor would not repent. Oh my. So I organized 180 pastors to sign a letter to the governor. Governor Tim Kaine wrote back to me a three page letter personally signed to me. And he said, well, I don't pray in Jesus name. So why should my chaplains be allowed to do that? <laughs> wow. And he said that on television. This is the, the governor of, of Virginia. Wow. So finally we organized uh, voter guides. In the next election, there were two different candidates. One was um, a Republican who wanted to let chaplains pray in Jesus name. One was a Democrat who did not want to let chaplains pray in Jesus name. Oh my. So we reversed that. The two, two candidates were Bob McDonald, the Republican, and Cray Deeds, the Democrat, and we faxed 2,500 churches with voter guides. <laughs> I love and it. And we listed Jesus all the legislators, oh, all so the good. legislators who would vote against Jesus and who would vote for Jesus when, the, when our bill wow. tried to go through the House and the Senate. Wow, awesome. Before the elections, they were about tied, like 41 to 43, it was pretty close before we sent out those voter guides. But four months after we faxed all those 2,500 churches, it was a 59 to 41 landslide for the wow. Republican Amen. Bob McDonnell. Oh, wow. And we fired 11 state representatives who had fought against Jesus. Praise God. Awesome. And, Praise and, God. and then we gave him 14,000 petitions and then the new governor, Bob McDonnell, reversed the policy and now the police chaplains are free again to pray in Jesus. Yay! God. With that, we awesome. gotta go. With you won! Thank you! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are gonna have you back, and then we're gonna do a few shows so that we, I mean, that was incredible. Oh, that listen, if that's you amazing. don't know Jesus, listen. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the kind of stories you see. Yes. You know, he laid his life down for us, and man, we wanna lay ours down for him. Mm -hmm. He's only called us to obey him, and listen, you know what? If you don't know him, it'll be the best thing you've ever done. Please just ask him into your heart today. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and be the Lord of your life. Listen, he is waiting for you. I've heard way too many times, no, you don't want me. Yes, he does. And then ask the uh, Holy Spirit to come and baptize you with the fire of God mm -hmm. and with your heavenly language. It's your 911 to God. You'll never be the same. It'll give you a power to walk things out because mm -hmm. he's your comforter, your counselor. He'll lead and guide you into all truth. Always lead you right back to the Father in yes. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. You can Amen. trust him because you can acknowledge him because Jesus is the one who left him. Okay? Yes. And if you said that, please call 307 637. Pray that 7729 so we can pray with you and get some material yes. in your hand. Go to our website today. Um, $20 or more offering uh, we'll get this anointing oil into your home, keeps us coming into your home and around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It smells great. It's anointed. It has a pearl in there for your great value. Rose of Sharon cap. And uh, hey, who doesn't need anointing oil? You know, start getting some Christmas gifts now. <laughs> mm -hmm. It smells amazing. <laughs> you know, so alrighty, we mm -hmm. love you. But Jesus loves you more. Remember, God does have a view and God does have a view personally for you. See you next time. Welcome to God's View. Oh, like we'll soon become new from God.